everybody we're back it's another week and another dev diary and today is zones and signature buildings i just wanted to share a quick life update i am moving soon to a new apartment in a new part of the city and i just got my boxes delivered today so i'm really excited to start packing and get moving and i will be making a video next week for the next feature highlight but i think the following week i will be moving on that monday and hopefully i get internet installed and have everything set up so that i can actually record another video but it's probably going to be a bit delayed from the usual pacing of when i release these dev diary recaps only because i will physically just not have my stuff and I will be moving so just FYI I'm still gonna make a video so it's not like we're not gonna get one but it's probably just gonna be a little bit delayed all right let's get started by reading the feature highlight as per usual this is number four zones and signature buildings so something that's new is signature buildings which are hybrid between unique and zone buildings and now they say of course if roads are the bones and arteries of the city then zones must be the meat fleshing out the city and they create suburban areas apartment building blocks commercial districts industrial parks and high-rise office complexes. Each zone type has its own requirements to flourish and in a functioning city they all benefit from each other. Factories need places to ship their products, companies need employees, employees need homes, shopping opportunities, and places to spend their free time. And actually in the gameplay trailer I believe is where we first saw how we see zone suitability in the user interface and so that's something we have to like factor in like is this area on the map suitable to zone XYZ type of district? It is cool like we did know it's like if we need more residential we're gonna need more commercial like we saw that before in city skylines one but this time it definitely seems a lot more deliberate and just generally intentional in how we we end up having to plan out our cities for zoning we still get the same three options fill marquee and paint of course fill is like the paint bucket marquee lets you select a region and then the paint tool lets you just, you know, draw wherever you want and and zone blocks as needed. Dezoning no longer has a separate tool as you can dezone any zone type by pressing the right mouse button while you have any of the zoning tools active. This is a huge improvement. Love to see that. While the fill tool is active, you can dezone an entire continuous area. Of course, with the marquee, it's a rectangular area. With the paint tool, you can do cell by cell. Now you no longer need to dezone the first zone before changing the zone type. You can just paint or draw whatever over it and it will automatically update. So I think that is vast improvement. I'm so glad they've made such like nice user experience changes just to like make it easier for us. As a new feature, the zoning tools are able to zone buildings from different architectural themes. I was wondering how they were going to do this and this makes a lot of sense. Like how intuitive, how intuitive. So of course the theme dictates the building's visual style, street markings, and roadside props, as well as the look of the service vehicles. With the zoning tool themes, you can zone buildings from both architectural styles, North American and European. So on the left, we've got the North American row houses and on the right we have the European ones. The European ones look really nice. Hello? Can we change these to look like those? Like in the actual US? Like can we get these to look better? I still love this model for city skylines. I think this is a great realistic addition to have but how come European row houses are nicer? That is my question. <laughs> Zone types. We knew this based off the gameplay trailer, but City Skylines 2 features more zone types. This time we're going to find out exactly what the types are, so that's really great. Residential zone types have been more than doubled, featuring six different zone types to create more diverse and realistic cities. The familiar zones are still available. Low density housing with detached houses and high density housing with tall residential towers. Residential zone types include medium density row housing with wall to wall homes medium density housing with apartment buildings, mixed housing with shops occupying the ground floor and apartments taking up the rest of the buildings and low rent housing with large apartment buildings housing lots of small apartments. Low rent housing is especially useful for low income residents such as students and young adults who've moved out of their parents' house to live in their own first apartment. Um, I love the introduction of mixed housing, of medium density housing, and of course the low rent. And I like that we get the option of having wall to wall row homes versus apartment buildings. I think that is such a great distinction and variety that we get. Low rent housing certainly does make sense for students and young adults. Although I do wonder how we're going to see poor neighborhoods develop in city skylines too. If there will be an obvious wealth disparity or yeah, I mean, I was gonna say or socioeconomic disparity, but I kind of hope there isn't like, I hope there isn't racism in city skylines too. Um, but you know what I mean? Like if there's poor neighborhoods, what will they look like? What can we expect to see? Like, I guess like going on with them with how they behave, I guess, with the rest of the city. I don't know. I mentioned this in a comment on my most recent video where I speculated about future DLCs. And just like in the comments, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if there was some sort of gentrifying mechanic? And I don't mean that we would try to gentrify. I mean that 
that we would have to try to better our low-income areas without allowing gentrification like it would be some sort of mechanic and i don't think they're actually going to put this in but it would be kind of cool if there was like a mechanic where if residents move out and new res residents move in you get penalized but if you manage to retain the original demographic and citizens of that neighborhood then you get like bonus positive points you know like something where bettering the neighborhood but keeping the original residence and keeping the rent low is actually better overall than like having it gentrify i don't know like if that makes sense but that would be so cool to have and i feel like it'd be complicated to build for lots of different reasons so they probably won't do that but needless to say i am curious what that looks like in city skylines too i'm curious if we're going to see homeless sims or not like maybe if our economy is doing really poorly will people be out on the streets like i don't really want that but like i guess it would be realistic Low and medium density housing tend to have larger apartments, which most residents find appealing. However, the cost of living is usually higher in smaller buildings, such as detached houses, row houses, and medium-sized apartment buildings, as the costs are divided among fewer households. Increasing land value also affects smaller buildings more as it affects the size of rent in general. On the other hand, high density housing can fit a lot of people in a small area, but its main negative aspect is that the apartments are usually small. Conversely, the rents are more affordable because the upkeep is divided among a large number of households. Mixed housing is where we've got the commercial on the bottom and residential on top it also does answer to two, the two different zone type demands medium residential housing and commercial which is nice so this makes sense for like downtown city centers commercial businesses also pay a portion of the rent for mixed housing which is great for the rent in those households commercial zones feature low and high density buildings like before where companies sell all types of goods manufactured locally or imported from outside connections so that can be everything from cars and groceries to clothes and paper products and they also provide the citizens with leisure options in the form of restaurants, movie theaters, bars, hotels, and more. And commercial zones thrive closer to residential areas as they provide them with customers. The difference between the low and high density businesses, aside from size, is the types of the companies as well as the volume of the goods they're able to sell. So low density would be boutiques, gas stations, small stores, and bars, while the high density ones are supermarkets, department stores, and various recreational locations such as theaters and hotels. Cool, hotels in the base game. Small businesses employ fewer workers and can serve smaller amounts of customers while large businesses have many employees and serve a greater number of people they can also have more stock compared to smaller businesses this is a cute gas station asset realistically sized as well which is nice commercial businesses benefit from local manufacturing as they have quick access to goods they are selling they also benefit from the nearby commercial companies because the transportation cost is lower so they can have a higher profit so we're gonna have to keep that in mind <laughs> industrial zones are divided into manufacturing companies and warehouses so manufacturing is most of the zones with factories and workshops shops while warehouses appear here and there answering to the needs of different companies and production processes. Warehouses store produced goods that are ready to be shipped further but are still waiting for transport or buyers. Industrial zones manufacture goods from materials that are either transported from outside connections by delivery trucks or extracted and processed locally in specialized industrial areas. Some goods are sold to commercial businesses who then sell them to customers like food while others are first sold to commercial businesses where they are further converted into products or immaterial goods such as beverages turned into entertainment. Industrial zones attempt to sell goods to local buyers first if there's an overproduction of a type of goods the company will ship the excess production to outside connections but selling to the local market is always more profitable continuing to sell to outside connections will further decrease the profit interesting so that will simulate the eventual oversaturation of the market and companies in general seek to reevaluate their business every now and then adjusting the number of employees to match the bi current business landscape and market needs that actually interests me because it makes me feel like we're not going well, they haven't said yet if we're going to have abandoned buildings and i imagine there would make it would make sense for some buildings to become abandoned but it does seem like instead of our buildings just getting abandoned quicker they're actually going to adjust the amount of employees they have before they decide to just like completely evacuate which is good this is a photo of a warehouse and also i would like to say with the industrial images because we haven't really seen too much of the industrial areas yet they look so great like the sizes of everything look really nice um we'll see further in the video it just looks excellent office zones are divided into low and high density buildings offices produce immaterial goods and services for private citizens and companies alike so they can have technological goods manufactured in industrial zones into software and further into other immaterial goods such as telecom finance and media so the office zone companies include banks electronics realtors law firms insurance companies and telecommunications companies <laughs> love the inclusion of law firms here so software is an important type of good for industrial and office sectors but it's not sold to private customers telecom and finance have a wider reach because private customers benefit from them media is sold directly to citizens in the form of consumer electronics video games and such i'm wondering with like all these specific goods 
if that's something that we're going to be able to see or not because like why name them specifically you know i'm just curious about that each zone type has a zone suitability info view which activates when you start zoning so it shows where the potential customers are located in if you're zoning commercial residential tells you where ground pollution is and shows areas that are otherwise unsuitable maybe there's high land value making rent for low density housing very high so i like that it is dependent on the type of zoning like even within residential if we're going to be zoning low density residential it wouldn't make sense to put it on like high property value land so that is fascinating zone demand city growth is based on different zoning types needing more space and the symbiotic relationship between them of course new citizens move in and require housing which increases demand and then they need jobs so commercial demand increases and then that increases industrial demand etc etc adjusting taxes for the different education levels as well as the various goods produced and sold in the city can have a great effect on local demand different education levels I'm gonna need to see more different education levels. If they're just equating education levels with the level of skilled labor that that person is working, then it does make sense, but I am confused why it would be based off of education and not a separate metric like income. But I guess they're just saying if you're higher educated, you'll have a higher income. As we know in real life, that's not necessarily true. The screenshot is the city information panel and we can see demand and city policies. Here we have a negative, for, I guess we have some unoccupied buildings and no, or like fewer availability of jobs. And that is why that residential isn't in as much demand. Commercial demand, um, I'm a little confused how to read this, I guess, because it, the bar fills up. And I would think the higher the bar, the more the demand, but maybe that's not true. I don't know. I'm not sure yet how to understand this. Maybe this is something that will become like clear when you're actually playing the game. It's like, oh, now I get what it means. But if not, then maybe they need to like change a little bit how the visual is representing everything. Cause at least I don't get it. Maybe, maybe you do. <laughs> Maybe if you're watching this, you're like, what are you talking about? I get it completely, but uh, but I don't, so. But let's move on. So families and seniors prefer large apartments, thus increasing the low and medium density housing demand. But single person households and students don't shy away from smaller apartments, favoring medium density and high density residential towers. And then the living costs are also divided among the high number of households, making living cheaper in these zone types. I do wonder if these age demographics are going to be generalized like this and everyone in a certain age group will seek out certain types of housing or i wonder if they're gonna do it where for the most part that is true but it's not necessarily true for every sim you know because i could see some sims wanting to live in like an apartment that are older right i don't know yeah obviously that's like more complicated in real life so i i don't even know how they would necessarily like do that in the game but i mean i'm okay with the simplified metric but i think it would be cooler if it wasn't like that residential zone demand also increases as jobs become available when unemployment increases and jobs aren't available, residential demand decreases until the issues are remedied. If the city has a large number of built but unoccupied homes, residential demand can decrease until the available homes become occupied. Commercial zone demand is based on manufacturers producing goods for sale and the availability of potential customers, as well as citizens needing jobs. Industrial zones need to sell goods to make a profit. Uh, local market is always a profitable option. Having goods and products to sell is only half the business. The commercial zones also require enough purchasing power from the local citizens to not only survive, but flourish. Thus, local demand for goods and products is an extremely important factor in commercial demand. Interesting. I definitely feel like um, we can't have commercial only around like downtown city centers with offices like we really have to be a little more deliberate in placing commercial i will say someone that i like i mentioned before city planner plays in a lot of his tutorial videos on how to build out a city in city skylines one he shows creating and like zoning like little pockets of commercial within residential and it does seem like that is a mechanic and functionality that they want us to do um especially to make sure that those businesses are getting the customers they need these are some high density commercial commercial demand also increases if companies detect the availability of a suitable workforce in the city so i guess it depends on the level of education as to who works for what sort of business i don't know industrial demand is based on citizens needing jobs in the manufacturing sector as well as local commercial companies requiring goods and products to sell. The demand can be increased by the availability of local resource extraction by specialized industries and setting up those areas provides materials for manufacturing locally, decreasing transport costs and increasing profits. It definitely seems like it's one of those things where if we don't have those areas, all of our imports or 
And yeah, I guess all the stuff we would need would have to get imported from outside connections. So the idea is when you can, you'll want to develop these out so that it's cheaper for your city to run and you end up getting more of a profit as well. So that's interesting. I guess this is a picture of the foresting zone, foresting industry zone. Worker availability is one of the cornerstones of industrial demand. Um, as the companies increase in level, their requirements shift to more educated employees, which increases productivity and efficiency, which in turn manifests higher profits. Having local warehouses is good for the manufacturing because the companies tend to have relatively small storage facilities. I wonder if warehouses are something we do have to place, maybe. Maybe they aren't growables. I know in City Skylines 1, we had to put them down, so I'm not really sure how it's gonna be in City Skylines 2 yet. Office demand is increased by citizens wanting to work in the office sector, as well as citizens and businesses needing certain goods. As software is produced, more office companies appear as they can further develop the software into other services. Interesting. I do like the look of these office buildings. I think all of the imagery that we are seeing today in the dev diary, as well as in the video, are so good. Everything looks really nice. Oops, all the buildings look so good. Similarly, office on demand benefits greatly from finding suitable workers to boost productivity and efficiency. Depending on the age range of the customers, different types of immaterial goods are preferred. Adults and seniors favor banking services and products from the financial sector, while children and teens consume more media and products. City specialization. Companies working with the same materials and producing similar products benefit from each other's proximity. Industries and offices concentrate on areas where similar companies already exist. They communicate with each other and have a better chance to hire specialized workers to increase their efficiency. As more and more companies produce the same type of goods or products, they gain a city-wide specialization bonus, which increases their efficiency and thus their profit. So the specialization can be assisted by setting up specialized industry areas which harvest materials used by the companies gaining the city specialization bonus. You can also adjust taxes to be favorable to those products and goods, which helps them develop even further. Oh wow, that's really cool. I actually feel like that's such a neat feature. In City Skylines 1, I feel like I got the like same city syndrome going on a lot of the time. Even when I would do a different layout and stuff, you know, it was all kind of like the same building spawning. I was using the same assets from the workshop. In terms of goods, it was all like the same, same thing, but it definitely seems like we're going to be able to be more unique with each playthrough, which I think is great. Land value and building levels. So the higher the land value, it is darker blue. White is low land value. And then building land value, we got green to red interesting i'm also curious for colorblind people can you tell the difference between the green and the red this is a red building my mouse is on the red building and then the, these are everything else <laughs> everything else here is a green building and then this color is the dark blue i feel like you can probably tell the dark blue from the green but can you tell the red from the green i would be really curious to see how they accommodate color blindness in this game i will say this is the one thing that i have consistently mentioned with each each dev diary and uh, release with each trailer is that I have not seen so far good color or like vision accessibility accommodations. They could have a setting. It could be something that you toggle on and off depending on what type of color blindness you have, but like it would be cool to see that. I want them to talk about that, you know? So, so far, not sure. Citizens tend to value large homes, a proximity of shops, services they require, schools and workplaces, as well as pollution free locations. If the citizens find homes that suit their needs, they move in. And if they are happy living there and are wealthy enough, they're able to pay a higher rent, which translates into an increase in the area's land value. I am curious are all citizens going to be paying rent or are we going to see some citizens purchasing homes? Because I feel like that would kind of change things a little bit. In terms of the economy, if we had some citizens purchasing homes and then also selling them, I can see how that could affect rent costs and stuff like that. Hmm. It is important to note that simply plopping all city services into a neighborhood doesn't increase the land value in that area automatically. Only when the residents and companies have their needs met, be it with services or shopping options, will land value be affected as residents and companies feel that the area is valuable to their existence. So it does seem like while we can zone districts, we might have to pay attention to what spawns within the districts then to make sure that there is enough diversity in the sorts of businesses that develop in order to hit those needs and then increase the land value. If the rent is higher than the upkeep cost of the building, the residents pool their leftover funds into improving the building, which eventually leads to the building leveling up. High demand for a specific zone type can also increase the rent and thus the land value if more people want to move into the city than there are places to live. To keep the land value in check if needed, you can adjust the various residential tax Taxes, encouraging or discouraging citizens to move in. Also, zoning more of those zone types with high demand can help keep the land value in check as the demand is met. Can also limit the number of required services and leisure options to keep the land value low. Citizens can tolerate some shortcomings in regard to their needs and still live relatively happy lives. 
that's good. So we get some sacrifices. <laughs> if they're not able or willing to pay higher rent, the rent decreases, which also affects the land value around the building. Residents will move out if the living costs are too high and if they don't feel like their needs are being met in the area where they live. And some will even move out of the city. However, if the residents continue to not be able to meet the rent costs, the building will start to deteriorate as no money is used for the building's basic upkeep. The residents then move out in greater numbers and the building becomes abandoned. This further decreases the land value. Abandoned buildings can become occupied by homeless citizens, but due to the constant disrepair, the building will eventually collapse. Wow. So we do have homeless citizens. We do have abandoned buildings. And in fact, we get collapsed buildings. So I do wonder, like, is it a matter of just bulldozing a lot? It seems like there's more to it. I can't imagine a building collapse would be a positive thing. I feel like you'd want to do something about that before the inevitable. That's an interesting lot here with the swimming pool. City skylines. Great. Great, great images. Land value affects different residential zones in different ways. I'm so sorry, I'm like out of breath. I might have to do my inhaler again, actually. Low density housing areas can quickly become expensive to live in as the land value increases. The higher land value affects the rent and since low density housing has only one household per building, the increased rent falls on the single household entirely. Thus, lower income families tend to move out of these residential areas and search for new homes in medium density housing areas. Wait, this is kind of like what I was saying. The thing I really want is that the sort of like gentrification factor. If an area gets gentrified, we get penalized, but I do like that at least we have families moving within our city, not just out of our city, but within our city. I do like that. Um, I like how the city does feel like more so like it's evolving now in City Skylines too. Medium high density housing areas are less affected by the increased land value as the living costs are still divided. Many citizens prefer living in smaller homes that cost less than struggling to make their rent. This is why I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving to a rent stabilized apartment and it's it is huge. It's bigger than my current apartment, but because it's not in Manhattan, it's a lot cheaper. It's rent stabilized. It has an elevator. Like I'm on a six floor walk up currently. In two weeks, I'm going to be in an elevator building and it has a trash chute. I didn't even know that was like a possibility. <laughs> But that's like super convenient. Companies evaluate suitable locations for their businesses, partially using land value and the size of rent, which is subtracted from the value of the company's production. However, companies also take into consideration the location based on the materials transportation costs. Do, do, do. The lower the transportation costs, the more suitable a location is for the company. And they use any leftover money to improve the building and eventually level it up. Building levels. All zone buildings have a building level from one to five. That represents the progression of the building from lower to higher quality building and a reflection of how wealthy its inhabitants are. Are. As it the level increases, the upkeep increases, which means that the rent also increases. In residential buildings, electricity and water consumption also decreases per household as the buildings change from levels three to five, and more apartments are available in medium and high density residential buildings. So people do become more eco conscious, I guess, or maybe the buildings are just like better designed to be more eco friendly. In commercial buildings, electricity and water used per one unit of goods or products sold decreases. Commercial buildings are able to produce goods and services faster, so they can sell them cheaper and then citizens would choose higher level commercial companies over the other options. With manufacturing office buildings, electricity and water used to produce one unit of goods decreases. Wow, it's actually kind of interesting. I wasn't so, like I do care about the electricity and water dev highlight or dev diary, but feature highlight dev diary. But I wasn't like as excited for that as I was the other dev diaries. But now that I'm realizing how important they are this time around with everything else, I am super intrigued. Not only did they make it easier for us to, I was gonna say electrify our city, that's not right, but to provide electricity and water to our city because they're now built under the roads, it seems like they're making the mechanic itself way more complex. That is really cool. Visually, buildings change at every other level. So lower level buildings have an intended cheaper look while higher level buildings adopt a more modern and detailed look. That would mean that we get a building at level one, level three, and level five, and then and level two, I guess, would look like level one, and level four would look like level three. Signature buildings. This is the new feature that they mentioned in the beginning. Each signature building has its own unlocking requirements, such as sculptor mansion having three requirements, reaching a certain progression milestone, attaining a specific citizen happiness level, and having a number of cells zoned with low density residential housing. So this is kind of like the unique buildings, the way we have to unlock them. I wonder what Sculptor Mansion is. I wonder if it's this building or not. But that is really fascinating because it's it's like a mix of the unique buildings we had as well as those special buildings from the pedestrian area expansion pack. So I do like that. And they actually do fill the needs of the zone area that they um 
are meant to go in, which is great. The building is unique and can be only placed once, but it is entirely free to build. It can be relocated just like any other poppable building and bulldozing it allows you to rebuild it again at a later date. Love that. Residential signature buildings vary in size from mansions to medium density apartment buildings to residential skyscrapers. Signature buildings function similarly to regular zoned buildings and contribute to the zone-based economic cycle. A residential building welcomes new residents while a commercial one or factory seeks a suitable business to occupy it. Uh, the same laws of success and failure affect the companies residing in the signature buildings as any other business. Wow, is this a grocery store? A Costco? I love this. Signature buildings allow you to build large commercial buildings, massive factories, or impressive offices. Each signature building also has one or more positive effect. These effects can range from affecting the neighborhood to affect the city. Some affect citizen well-being and city attractiveness for tourists, while others improve the city's entire industrial sector or boost high-level education effectiveness and more. Ooh, I love this. And so in this screenshot, we see this is a modern office building where coffee gets converted into game design, art, and code. That is such a dad joke. That is so funny. Wow. Big gamer moment. And we get plus 1% office efficiency citywide, plus 5% interest in university education citywide, plus 1% university graduation chance citywide and then plus five well-being within one kilometer and it requires electronics and produces software that is so cool and i love the look of this building actually this asset kind of looks like the in the korean the korea pack for city skylines one there is a electricity building isn't there a building that provides or is it the recycling bit building the incinerator looks like this doesn't it but it's yellow so that's the end of the dev diary and next week we get City services, yay. All right, let's watch the video and then we will reconnect and talk about it after. Every decision you make weaves a thread into the fabric of your city. But don't for a second imagine a smooth, seamless surface. Cities don't work like that. Instead, it's an urban patchwork marked by the realities of life and living. You'll create and stitch it together with zoning. Zoning lets you decide where people live and work. You create these residential, commercial, and industrial zones with zoning tools. They work in a couple of different ways. Click and drag over cells on the map to zone large rectangular areas. Zone all adjacent cells with one click. Or get granular, zoning a neighborhood cell by cell. When you establish a city, you choose a map. The map's theme dictates if your city's buildings will have a North American or European architectural style. You can now use zoning tools to mix it up. Go on, sprinkle a little North American flair into your European city, or vice versa. Okay, you know how zoning tools work, but what can you zone? Well, let's start with residential zones, the places and spaces where citizens relax with friends, raise families, and rest their heads that after night. There are now six residential zone types. Two will be familiar, low-density housing, detached houses for single families, and high-density housing, tall towers packed with residents. New zoning types include medium-density row housing and medium-density apartment buildings. There's low-rent housing now, too. Huge apartment buildings with tiny apartments. Finally, there's mixed housing. Here, residents live in apartments above ground floor shops. Mixed housing adds next-level realism because homes and shops rub elbows like most real-world city centers. Ready to talk business? You'll create dedicated commercial zones where companies sell the locally produced and imported goods people need and want. Your commercial zones are also where citizens and tourists eat out, catch the latest blockbuster, and dance until dawn. You'll establish industrial zones with factories, workshops, and warehouses where businesses can store goods ready for distribution or export. You'll also develop office zones. Here, you'll find small, low-density buildings with only a few businesses in operation. You'll also get the glittering, high-density towers that define your city's silhouette in the sky. Growing your city and zoning go hand in hand. Here's an example. You zone residential areas that boost the population, and with it, the demand for jobs. You respond by creating an industrial zone with factories where people get to work. Now, these factories produce goods, but they won't stay in business long without somewhere to sell them. You solve that problem by expanding commercial zones. You see, each zone helps create the momentum you need to realize the city of your dreams. And it wouldn't be the city of your dreams without signature buildings. 
These are unique residential, commercial, industrial, and office buildings that you unlock as your city expands. They're free to build, and you can plop them anywhere. It's City Skylines lingo. Go on, say it. What's so special about signature buildings? Well, they function like any zoned building. A home for people, a warehouse for industry, an office for workers. But they can elevate the neighborhood in unique ways. Signature buildings can also bring citywide benefits. Zone and place your signature buildings carefully so each city district flourishes and plays its part in the success of the whole city. Life's rich tapestry has never been richer than in City Skylines 2. This shot looks great. We do now have an even more clear view of this helicopter, so it definitely implies emer emergency services. Actually, we will see soon, I guess you, you just saw, that we do get natural disasters in the base game, which is great. I think it's a base game feature, so I do like that it's there, and we have the ability to toggle it on and off, so that's also great for people that don't want to have to deal with that. Again, I don't see keys here. Akam said we might have been able to see the keys in the last dev diary but i wasn't able to see it or not dev diary but developer video i couldn't find one it looked like it was built into the harbor but if y'all do see that i would love to like no i would love to know where because i couldn't see it also really love this office building this bridge i'm not sure if we've seen this bridge before we might have but i do want to comment that it looks really nice if we have seen it before we've seen it before but i would like to appreciate it again it is gorgeous um also looks like there's a pedestrian bridge here pedestrian path and bridge here do you want to see more like cool design for pedestrian bridges like for example Nashville has a really nice pedestrian bridge if you're in Nashville say hi in the comments but yeah I would love to see like that one in game in particular curious what these circular buildings are this is just showing showing the zoning tool I think it's great I like that we can just right click to dezone now it's a lot easier they did say when you zone now you select the theme and then you zone um I like that feature I think that is a really smart way of doing it it makes it super easy yeah great job <laughs> <laughs> great job devs like what a great idea um let's go back to that screen this is the new home screen for city skylines and you know whoops y'all as we know the game is still in development it does launch in october but it's still in development so we might see some changes between user interface and stuff like that and even like just screenshots that they use but oh my god we get the medieval castle for free if we log in with our paradox account this asset looks so good are you joking me okay anyways that is so great. I can click now the mods to see them. I wonder if this is going to the Steam Workshop or if this is a separate thing. Maybe we can access the Steam Workshop within here or maybe is there a way now to mod across platforms? Is there a chance? Or are these Paradox like developer mods? What does that mean? Gosh, need to know. We still have the editing tools, which is great. Here, I like that we can actually see what the map looks like from the selecting tool. I think that's a vast improvement. I'm a little disappointed that theme here on this page means the building style. Like, I really was hoping European was not going to be a theme. I was actually hoping that theme would actually be biome. I wanted to get biome followed by climate, latitude, and the rest of these things here. And then, like, we have the option of choosing right or left side. Maybe, like, they, if this was just road theme, like, the way the road lines are displayed what side of the street they drive on like default vehicles i would understand that but i don't like i don't like having to select it per map that's not i'm not a huge fan of that especially when we now have the zoning tools being able to select themes when you zone i would rather be the theme here like the biome of the map itself we do see now that the american flag has been chosen as the icon for north american which is a questionable choice but i can't decide what would be a suitable replacement either i guess like a picture of north america you know in terms of an icon that's a lot of details in a small space so like from a design perspective like it might not make the most sense to have it be like the continent <laughs> um but from like uh north america isn't just the united states of america perspective it doesn't make sense to have it be the american flag maybe like if they did it by animal i don't know pick like an obvious animal that belongs to a specific continent or a region where they're going to be doing the theme from like i don't know maybe europe would be God, what animals does Europe have? I don't know, like a cow? You know what? Maybe that was a bad idea. I take it back. I, I don't have a solution for this. I don't. But I am still curious about what other themes we are going to be getting and what does the word theme imply? 
And if we go here, they do hover over this and it says that the theme changes the visual style of buildings, service vehicles, roads, roadsides, and traffic lights from like just from the get go. And then it says you can still change the style of the buildings during the game, but everything else will remain as selected here, which that's where I'm like, huh? I kind of get keeping the roads, road signs, and traffic lights the same, but I don't necessarily understand keeping service vehicles the same. Why do those have to be standardized? Why can't service vehicle designs be based off of the style of the service building that we actually place down? I don't know. It's here, yeah, it shows even if we pick a European theme, that the theme does not dictate what side the traffic drives on. So I, I, that's fine as well like i don't mind that being something you check on and off but it is like why would we pick a theme for the map I feel like biome is just like a much better choice because that will show us like what animals we see on the map what plants trees textures of the ground you know the general climate well i guess here is the climate right sunny with rain and then this certain thing i guess i was thinking more from the plants and yeah and here we see natural disasters is an option that we can just turn on and off we do get a brief construction animation right here with the cranes i know they're still developing it people were like oh there's no construction animation in city skylines too it has been confirmed by Colossal Order that there is an animation, it's just not finished yet. That's why we haven't seen it. They are still creating the animation and that's fine with me. Whew. Okay, so we've got North American low density housing. It's nice that it, it reminds you what theme you've selected before you zone, like just in this area, that's really nice. So North American style single and semi-detached houses. Then we have North American style row houses, which is medium density. North American style small apartment buildings, medium density. North American style apartment buildings with commercial space on the bottom, apartments on top, that's North American mixed housing. Low rent housing, which I think is, I'm still stoked about low rent housing being available. I think that's a great feature. And then high density housing. I love seeing the people on their little porches here. I think that's so realistic and nice. Love this little truck too. I love that colored pink. It's like my hair. Love the way this building looks. I bet this is the low income. Actually, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. My guess this is this would be the low income, but I guess it could no, I do think it's low income. I'm standing by that. I think it's the low income housing. Looks great. Same with this, looks so good. And the mixed use looks amazing. Advertise here. I like that we can see which businesses have not moved in yet. And I guess once our demands get met, we will see these buildings be occupied by different businesses. It's ni nice that it isn't set to one type of like bottom, like one type of storefront that we'll see. Also, it does look like this a residential building comes with parking. These two have little garage openings for cars. So that is actually cool to know that some of the buildings will fill a parking need. Oh, these look so nice. I thought this was really funny. Crap fish granules. Whoever designed this. I have no words. <laughs> Now this is interesting because it does look like now we can actually make zones of irregular shape to fill our industrial need. And we see this with the farm soon. This scale looks so great. It looks so good. Love how everything is looking. And these are the fields for the farms, which is what we wanted. I like that they also come with fencing by default. I think that looks really cute and it's nice that we don't have to, you know, put it down ourselves. I wonder if we could turn it on and not on or off or not, you know, for those that like to detail. That building looks so nice. That building looks nice. These are uh, the signature buildings we're looking at right now. This one's so nice. These are so great. So this says switch on. This is an industrial signature building. From the humble toaster to the self-organizing sock drawer, this factory makes everything that runs on electricity. So you get plus two industrial efficiency citywide, plus one college graduation chance citywide. And then we can see the ground pollution, air pollution, and noise pollution for each building. So this one is the Corundum, Corundum condos, a modern classic that puts a smile on the faces of its inhabitants. It gives plus four well-being within one kilometer. Oh, and it comes with a little backyard. That's cute. And we get signature buildings for every type of zone. Mixed residential, commercial, industrial. Oh, residential, mixed residential, commercial, industrial, and office. That's really nice. Love this. Whew. These all look so good. Another helicopter. 
Wow, okay, I guess here's my key takeaways. Cause I'm having trouble today for some reason, my, my asthma is acting up. So I'm gonna try to keep it a little quick here. My key takeaway is that it's a lot easier now to zone as well as dezone. Dezoning is just a right click. You can just get rid of anything. If you wanna rezone a zone from residential to commercial, it's just a matter of dragging. You don't need to dezone and then zone again. So I think that's great. I love all the different residential zones, of course. I think the low income housing is they really did wait to tell us didn't they? i think that's such a great addition of course the mixed use we all wanted mixed use so that's great to have i like that citizens move within the city themselves like if they can't afford rent they will just move to a new location um i love the signature buildings they're like unique buildings but better they don't cost any money they give us little progression points that we can work towards if we want a certain building we can just you know do whatever it takes to unlock it and then we get to place it for free it just seems like a nice sort of motivational feature and plus they give us benefits for the city which i really appreciate what else homelessness is now a thing in city skylines too homelessness as well as um, abandoned buildings and collapsed buildings which i just feel like are very specific so i do wonder like what does the collapse of a building entail in city skylines too overall colossal order has done a great job of making the process better so even when we start a game instead of having to go into game options and turning on or off milestone progression or natural disasters or whatever we can do that for a save file by save file basis without like you know messing anything up because you click the map it, you can choose there and then what you want to do so i think that's great yeah i guess i guess you know what i'm excited i'm not like very surprised i guess from what we were told and i don't have that much like further speculation on it but i think it's great i think we're all really excited to hear about this i think all the assets look really good they're doing such great work on this game so yeah sounds good i guess i'll see y'all next week for the next video be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more and yeah bye